Good morning from beautiful Brisbane, Australia, and welcome to Healing from Complex PTSD. My name's Linda. I'm a certified complex trauma professional, and today we're going to talk about hyper, not hypo, hypersexuality. Now, I understand there's not a lot of information around about this, so hence we're going to do a series around healthy sexuality and hyposexuality and hypersexuality so that you've got information in your hot little hands that you can use and I will eventually put it all together in a workbook as well so that you can work with your complex trauma coach, a trauma coach, counsellor, psychologist, whomever you see to help. It's good to have these conversations with someone Okay, we need that anchoring point, non-judgmental, caring, concerned person who can help us because especially with childhood developmental trauma and sexual abuse, there's so much we don't know about in having a healthy relationship, having healthy sexuality and so much more let alone the multitudes of generations that have never even had these conversations. So whilst we're going to be talking about hypersexuality, I just want to do a quick run through on healthy sexuality. So in the context of childhood developmental trauma, healthy, sex healthy sexuality, I really having a hard time getting all of this out at once. I'm sorry. <laughs> Raw and real tonight. Healthy sexuality could be understood as the ability to engage in sexual expression and relationships in a manner that is affirming, respectful and emotionally safe. And I also want to add into this description and psychologically safe as well. The emotional does come into the psychological, but the psychological includes more than just the emotional. Okay. In so all of that in spite of our past adverse experiences. So for those who have experienced childhood developmental trauma, the pursuit of healthy sexuality often entails a process of unlearning harmful beliefs or behaviours and replacing them with ones that foster consent, mutual respect and emotional well-being. And... In part of that, I want to include with a very heavy emphasis that no means no means no. There's no space around it. It's just no. And if you're with somebody who hasn't got an education in healthy sexuality, have this conversation with them, what they think about each of these parts before even jumping into bed because... You need to know what you're dealing with in advance, okay? Now, understanding healthy sexuality, therefore, isn't just about the physical act of sex, but encompasses emotional intelligence, self-awareness, and effective communication. It is about recognising and respecting one's own boundaries and those of others, something that can be significantly challenging for those impacted by developmental trauma. So when we think about it, we didn't have the opportunity to learn how to communicate growing up. So it's something that we begin to interweave throughout our life as we grow through our recovery space. So it's not just a one and done, it's a continual learning process. Now I've lost my spot. We're having a really good night tonight. <laughs> okay. In this light, healthy sexuality becomes not just a personal achievement, but also a relational one, reflecting a state of well-being in the individual and in their interactions with others. Okay, we've got through it. <laughs> Sorry, gang, I usually just record all this live. I come straight to you. But today, it's just like so much is happening that I'm like nervous too. <laughs> I don't have a habit of talking about sexuality, mine or anyone else's, 
because as I grew up, it was a very private thing, not just because of in relation to sexual abuse, but there are things in my life that I consider private that other people wouldn't at all. And so for me to come on YouTube and start talking about sexuality, it's really anxiety producing, but for the greater good of all, we are going to do this, okay? We are going to get through it and do it well. Okay, now, so there are things that impact us under the realm of hypersexuality. And as we go through this, I want you to think about if something in this list applies to you, then there are ways that you can do to recover from it impacting your life repeatedly, okay? But first of all, before we go there, we need to know what are these things that are impacting my life that stop me from having healthy communication, healthy relationships, healthy connection with anyone, okay? So especially when you think about an abandonment wound or attachment wounds, all of those things come into play as well. So trying to nut it out and just say black and white, it just doesn't work with complex trauma because each of these things that we're going to look at are in and of themselves multifaceted, okay? So I say this so that you don't give yourself a hard time thinking that it's got to be over and done with overnight. It, it, just, it just can't happen that way. Okay, so before I go off on another tangent, let's look at this. So excessive sexual thoughts, persistent and intense sexual thoughts, fantasies or urges that may dominate your mind. And I don't think I need to explain that because they will interrupt your day, all day, every day, quite often, even though you're working really hard for that not to happen. Compulsive behaviours, engaging in sexual behaviours repetitively and uncontrollably, often beyond what is considered typical or healthy. Impaired control, difficulty controlling the impulse to engage in sexual behaviours, even when there are negative consequences. So think about if you automatically engage in a sexual behaviour and you haven't had time to catch your breath and think about what's going to happen five steps after this, okay? So that's the kind of thinking that with complex trauma we don't have. So then we keep going back to doing the same thing instead of going, I've got to think this through. Okay, escapism usually or using sexual activities as a way to escape from emotional pain, distressing memories or uncomfortable feelings related to trauma, emotional numbing, using hypersexuality to numb emotional pain, leading to a temporary relief from feelings of emptiness or distress. And look, I think we can all go down the road of saying, yep, I can recognise where that's happened in my life, definitely. I just had no language for it. Seeking validation, seeking validation, self-worth or a sense of control through sexual encounters or attention from others. Risk-taking, engaging in risky sexual behaviours or pursuing novel and extreme sexual experiences. Now, if you're watching this video, do not come at me about pathological, pathologically or pathologizing that too about sex because I'm not. These are things that people have got going on in their life driven by the impact of childhood developmental trauma. So if you as an adult want to engage in risky sexual behaviours, you want to pursue novel and extreme sexual experiences, you go for it. Absolutely. You do you. Okay. I'm not trying to stop you doing anything at all. I'm here purely to give you this information to normalize wounds that come from our childhood. Okay. This is you being able to sit with another adult and saying, well, heck yeah, that's happening for me and that's happening. And is it impacting my life in a way that is not healthy for me, my life now, 
and my future and what I want to create in my life. Okay, they're the questions that we need to be asking when we're looking at trauma as well. Preoccupation, spending a significant amount of time thinking about or engaging in sexual activities to the detriment of other aspects of your life, i.e. are you turning up to work late? Are you leaving work early? Are you going out at lunchtime and not coming back for hours? Right? To the detriment because five steps after that continually happening, you're out of a job. All right? So these are the thought processes we've got to think about. Is it? a negative consequence going to happen, all right? Interference with daily life. Hypersexuality can interfere with work, social interactions, and daily responsibilities impacting overall functioning. Is it taking you away from time with your spouse, partner, friends, friendship groups, your kids, your alone time that you need just to recharge? Like, work it through the impact in your life. Shame and guilt, feeling intense shame, guilt, or self-disgust following hypersexual episodes, which can perpetuate the cycle of behavior. So saying the shame and guilt happens, so then when we read the first list about the emotions, but in order to get rid of the shame and guilt, I go and repeat my, my behavior again, okay? So think that through to the point of Am I burying things that I need to go, I need a healthy way to work with this? Desire for emotional connection. Seeking emotional connection or validation through sexual interactions, often due to unmet emotional needs. So if you take anything away from this video, apart from me being all over the shop because I'm talking online about sexuality, take away that you need to start spending some time thinking, where does this action take me five steps from now? What will be the consequences? And now that I've recognized this behavior, am I able to sit and get a handle on what emotions are driving or underlying or behind or any position you like really, the behavior that's happening that's not going to have healthy consequences in my life. So you can jump online and you can actually Google an emotional wheel. So why do we do this? Because we need the language to put around either the sensations, the emotions, the responses, retaliations, okay, the ruptures. We need to sit down and go, hmm, feel a bit fearful and it could just be I'm feeling a bit fearful about acknowledging the one thing that's in there but why am I feeling fearful hmm what if I'm going to get rejected or am I rejecting myself or why do I feel that way okay do I feel that I'm going to be excluded do I feel persecuted okay so you're working it out all the time and it helps you go within to deeper and deeper levels for being able to acknowledge your emotions okay i'm glad you stuck with me through all of that remember all of these let me just get my little thing happening with your um no it's not gonna work so remember here we go again the nerves are really gone <laughs> These will all be in a blog post for you so you can sit down and read and I will have a longer explanation of healthy sexuality and uh, you can read through that and really take some time to think about the points in it that aren't serving you and your life and the life you want to create for you, okay? Your rules, your way, your time, your space and uh, thanks for being here and persevering with me. I could go and edit it out, but let's just forget about trying to be perfect <laughs> and have some fun as well. I've got to go to class now. I'm holding a European, Australian, Indian supervision class tonight. And uh, I will see you in the next video. And thanks for being part of our global family.
Bye for now.